So today is gonna be one of those traditional tutorial videos that you've seen here on my channel before where I try and bust out a new technique in four minutes or less. This video will be no different. And today's topic, we're gonna be talking about why I export in ProRes every time I edit. So first things first, I have a new backdrop. You may have noticed I wanted to kind of create something new. I sit here at this desk a lot editing and I wanted to create an environment that inspired creativity. So this is the new backdrop. Recently, I've been trying something new with my exports. Now in the past, what I would do is I would export an H.264 video as like a final or something, only to notice like this one little thing that I'd have to go back into Premiere and change and re-render the entire video. Obviously, this is very time consuming when working on a project or on deadlines. But now I have a new workflow inspired by legendary Hollywood film editor, Walter Murch. In an Adobe talk, Mr. Murch actually spoke before on a similar technique involving exporting a QuickTime uncompressed file. For my work, however, a lot of stuff that I do ends up here on YouTube. And if it's going to run through these encoders, then I'm going to use a different technique. I thought I might as well just use ProRes instead. Now I realize that some people may not know what a ProRes file is. A ProRes file is a minimally compressed video file. A ProRes file is usually used as a digital intermediate when passing between different editors or different post houses, color grading, sound mixing, because of the quality of the video that it retains while keeping the file size down as compared to like a raw file. One of these ProRes types is ProRes HQ which maintains a 422 10-bit color space, which many editors prefer, while being able to stay visually lossless among many copies. This file usually has a .mov extension, and because it's minimally compressed, it doesn't take as long to render as an H.264 file. Now, this technique involves exporting your entire timeline as a ProRes file on your first fine cut, or when you're really close to finishing your project. Once your ProRes file is finished exporting, you import it back into Premiere and lay it on your highest track across your entire timeline. And any changes you need to make, you can simply cut into that section of the video for your final. Doing this will help speed up your export times in your final when you go to export your H.264. Because when you do this, Premiere is actually searching on the video tracks from the top down. So anything that's blended together, it's gonna try and export that. But if it's just a solid layer, like the ProRes file that you have on your highest track, then it's already been compressed and it's already been compiled. So it's not gonna work as hard to render out those parts. Even if you don't really do rough cuts or fine cuts and you just upload right away, which some people do, this can still be beneficial to you. Many times when I've even gone into my final project and exported my final H.264 file, I would find this one little thing in color correction or something that I messed up in an effect. I'd have to go back in, I'd have to change that one little section out and I'd have to export out an entire H.264 file again. Now, if I'm using this ProRes method, however, then I have a ProRes file that I can view like a rough cut right away since it exports much quicker because it's minimally compressed than the H.264 file. I'll be able to view a rough cut. I'll see any changes I need to make. I'll simply cut into those sections and then export an H.264 once I'm done. Now, I do want to mention that the ProRes file is definitely bigger than your H.264 file. So this isn't something that I would like recommend uploading to YouTube or anything. It's just going to take a lot of time. Some people in some work environments say you may lose quality while working with the ProRes file rather than an uncompressed. So I'll just go ahead and put this disclaimer in there. If you're sending this out to like a theater to be blown up on this big screen, then I would definitely recommend going with the uncompressed compressed method. You can do this by selecting QuickTime in the render window, and then in your dropdown, just select uncompressed option here. But of course, if you're a creator here on this platform like I am, then ProRes 422 might be the solution for you. You can do this simply by going once again under the QuickTime, and then in the dropdown, just select ProRes 422. A lot of people don't already have the ProRes codex installed on Premiere CC, so I'm just gonna go ahead and drop the link that Adobe provides these free downloads right from their site. You can just simply go on there, download these, import them here using this little tab in the export window, and you'll have your ProRes codex installed. You may have to restart in order to see them pop up. I've been using this method for a couple months now, and it's definitely like saved me a lot of time in my edits, a lot of frustration having to make those changes, which I do have mistakes a good bit in my final cut so I have to go back and make these changes and this process makes it easier to do so. So I wanted to share this technique that I've been using to speed up my workflow here on this platform because I feel like a lot of creators here on YouTube struggle with the same thing in the deadline so this is something that can definitely help some people. Love to hear what you think of the process and if it's saving you any time here in the comments below. Give this video a like if you did learn something new and if this is something that's beneficial to you. Subscribe to this channel for more filmmaking and editing tutorials just like this one with post notifications on and until next time we'll see you later.